two, one. Good Wednesday morning, oh, everybody. Goodness. It is hump day. Hump day. Yes. <laughs> right here on KSAT you know, News now. We got another bro show. David, it's, it's, what's happening, man? Bro show. There we go. Boom. It's boom. it's kind of sad it because <laughs> like months ago when there was nobody in the station because of right. the pandemic, yeah. you could go hump day real loud. And now like people Still upstairs, yeah. they're all in the newsrooms, you gotta go hump day. It'd be really quiet. Yeah, we're waiting for people to maybe echo it yeah. on. I don't yeah, we'll have to uh, have you back on here but next week. Are there people fill it out? out. <laughs> There's, there's I see people here. I see more. Our parking there. lot's a little bit more full yeah. nowadays. So, so um, yeah, we got a lot going on this Wednesday of. morning. Of course, uh, talking Spurs, David. Look, we're not in the playoffs, Ooh. but you know, have a couple well, of headlines here when it comes to San Antonio. Well, hopefully, Spurs. they're going to get to the playoffs pretty soon because this is like the third year in a row they were in the lottery. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, at, at yeah. some point, these these kids got to mm -hmm. develop into yeah. a playoff caliber. Not players and team and everything else. We got to yeah. get this thing in the right direction. Not used to seeing them in the lottery for three mm -hmm. straight seasons. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about their upcoming pick here in the draft and also that uh, deal to have some games outside of the AT&T Center. David Robinson looked good yesterday. He did. Night, he always looks great yeah. though. Yeah, I love the love five zero. Right. That's he could what probably slam doing. on somebody. Some of them <laughs> yeah. young guys. He can teach them a thing or two. Um, uh, and of course, uh, so we're going to be talking Spurs here in just a little bit, and then we're going to be talking about Brackenridge Park because. It is apparently going to the goats, David. Not the dogs, the goats. <laughs> so we're saving yeah. a little uh, energy. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're doing over there? There we go. Yeah, yeah. And creating other kinds of energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's going to be an interesting story there that we have going on at Brack Park. And uh, this is a pretty crazy story, too. The yeah. Texas teen who was caught in the middle of that tornado. Remember that? He's now the face yeah. of a popular campaign to save lives. So, yeah, they turned that into something good. He did. So, so Definitely. Mm -hmm. All, All right, right, David. But yeah. uh, starting off here, of course, a lot of people have been affected by this, this nationwide baby formula shortage. Uh, and we're talking about parents, caregivers, millions of people around the country. This is this is getting to the point of scary. It is. Especially yeah. when you, you talk, even in our own newsroom, and I'm sure in your office or, mm -hmm. or at home, that you know people who are pregnant, you know people who have just had babies, mm -hmm. and you start worrying about these, yeah. these poor moms and yeah. dads and what what they're going to do if they can't yeah. find the, the correct baby formula because there's a lot of kids who have some kind of you know born with something that would mm -hmm. cause them to need a different kind of formula or something in their food and mm -hmm. can't find it yeah Ridiculous. absolutely so hopefully there is some help on the way Abbott yeah. nutrition this is the maker of uh, similac and other baby Formula is very popular for him, said has come to an agreement with the Food and Drug Administration to fix some of the safety issues at a Michigan factory that has been closed for more than three months, adding to this already nationwide shortage. Yeah, there are some questions, though, what precisely the FDA is going to ask Abbott to do and the facility to do before it reopens. Mm -hmm. And it could take a while to get it reopened. The company has previously said that once the FDA signs off on the fixes, It'll take two weeks just to restart production yeah. and then another six weeks to eight weeks yeah. to get their products back on the shelves. So still a while away. Going. Yeah, about uh, two and a half months um, until we actually get fully back on store shelves here. So speaking of store shelves, they've been uh, empty. If you've gone to any grocery store, parents are scrambling and uh, many of them traveling miles just to locate formula for their infants also going through Amazon, other retailers yeah. and things like that. But that's we've also seen that's been a little um, a little dangerous too because sometimes they're not getting what they're paying for. Yeah, pediatricians are also warning parents to, to not change the formula mm -hmm. around. Don't add water. Don't if you're gonna do something, you always need to check with your pediatrician before you trying to change the formula that you have or try you know, they're trying to stretch it into three mm -hmm. or four days or even yeah. a, even a week with the little bit that they have and mm -hmm. it's just it's it's a it's a tough situation and it's something that need they need to get this thing fixed. Absolutely, yeah, and you know we've done stories on what some parents are doing, including uh, just trading other items, yeah. trading other maybe like baby clothes for formula. So it is a uh, it's a pretty dire situation. And you hear there. these these horrible stories, mm -hmm. you know, buy it off of buy it off of eBay or yeah. buy it off of Amazon, and it's costing five, six, seven times mm -hmm. as much. And there's nothing that hasn't gone up. Everything yeah. that you buy every day has gone up in price, and now you're going to charge moms and dads who just had a baby some you know 500 percent more for some baby that's just it's somebody's got to get control of this yeah. thing they yeah. better do it in a hurry or yeah, we're gonna be in a, trouble uh, it's a difficult situation yep. out there all right david switching gears a little bit uh, ERCOT 
Remember Ooh, them? Yeah. <laughs> we, Our friends at ERCOT. The stuff with yeah. them. Yeah. Um, they say they are actually ready for whatever Mother Nature throws at them this summer. Hopefully, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, they're getting Fingers tested crossed. right now because May, we'll talk to Sarah Spivey here just a minute, mm -hmm. but May, they've been talking about it. Our weather department, how May could go down as the hottest May ever since they started keeping a record. So ERCOT is already getting tested. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ERCOT stands for the Electric Re Reliability Council of Texas. So they're basically saying they will have more reserve power available to the power grid this summer than in previous summers. The head of the Texas Public Utility Commission Chair Peter Lake, he said that uh, the head of ERCOT, Brad Jones, they are both emphasizing conserving energy whenever possible, though. So they're saying they're going to have some enough in the tank, but also yeah. conserve some energy. Well, they already did that. Apparently they had a couple of plants go offline. They mm -hmm. had some they had some problems. I remember over the over this last weekend, they sent out that message that asked everybody to keep their thermostat at 78 degrees, which is very, very difficult. It is, especially when it's so hot outside. Oh, man. So <laughs> yeah, that's a tough, that's but, you a know, tough that ask. was that was their first test. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. asking some of these uh, some of these plants to hold off on scheduled maintenance. Yeah, before we get to so we can get through May and not have any more problems because we still we're just halfway to, through the month of May. And we've already hit 100, what, a couple times, three times, somewhere in there. It, it, as uh, yeah, and you Ooh. mentioned Sarah Spivey, the way she said it, it's been sizzling out there yeah. uh, for the past couple of weeks or so. So we'll see how uh, ERCOT kind of responds to this. Um, obviously, they've been in the news for a lot of different things and uh, definitely need to have stuff ready to go as we get uh, into these hot, hot months. From winter to summer. Yeah. Hey, remember that Texas teen who was driving in Round Rock got caught in the middle of that tornado and survive spun around. Wow, remember that? Yeah, this was video that went viral. So yeah. uh, I believe uh, we might show this here in just a little bit if you're watching on our visual platforms. But he's now the public face of TxDOT's Click It or Ticket seatbelt safety campaign. So we've all heard about this campaign in the past before. Yeah, Riley Leon said he was wearing a seatbelt. Remember that he was wearing a seatbelt when his truck flipped over on its side, spun around several times in a circle in the middle of that storm as he was mm -hmm. doing a little storm chasing mm -hmm. and the storm and him cross paths. Apparently. They did. Yeah. They did. So yeah. yeah, this happened back in March. A very scary scene there is that remember that tornado just kind of blew through uh, one of the major highways up there north of Austin. So here's a little bit now of what Leon had to say now that he's had some time to basically kind of think about what happened. It was a couple of days after that I realized I thank for the God I wore my I wore my seatbelt that day because if not the accident could have been more tragic. Probably wouldn't be here at this at this moment. Uh, here's that yeah. video. Yeah, look at yeah, that. This is <laughs> it's unbelievable. Like we said, just spinning just in circles. Going. I mean, this is out of the movie Twister, but this is <laughs> like is, you know is. life imitating art or art imitating life. I guess is the way you look at it. But that was just, that was just incredible. So. He survived. Mm -hmm. He's here to talk about it. He's here to talk about wearing a seatbelt, and he can wear his seatbelt in his new truck that he got. Yeah, he got that too as well. So uh, Riley's Everything gotten a good. little bit of a good fortune coming his yeah. way after being stuck there. So TxDOT, uh, they said in a, new, in a news release that nearly 7,000 people have been saved by seatbelts since that it Click It or good. Ticket campaign began That's 20 just, years look ago. Look at that thing. That's just incredible. That is absolutely incredible. Yeah, if you are listening to us on the podcast, you may remember this video, but if you're watching us on the video, platforms yeah the, the trucks on its side spinning and it ends up being yeah. upright and he just drove he drove off. off you know what that reminds me of in the movie twister not to make light of that but in the movie twister when the cow goes right. by yes she goes cow yeah. And then the cow comes back. It's like, I don't know why I remember that. No, it was definitely the early ages of like CGI yeah. technology. Yeah. And I, I remember it looking, I mean, you look back at it now, that's probably very advanced at the time. But um, anyway. I mean, yeah, uh, fortunately for this young man, he managed to survive this. Obviously never want to get caught in this Ooh. type of situation ever. Yeah, that, that's sticking, taking storm chasing yeah. to the extreme that, right that there. Is, yeah. All cool. right, lighter note, Spurs. Mm -hmm. Missed oh, out yeah. on the jackpot last night. They pretty much ended in the NBA draft lottery where everybody expected mm -hmm. them to end. Not in the top four, but they ended up with a pretty nice draft pick. Pretty nice position. Yeah, also. number nine. So uh, this is be the highest pick that they've had in the NBA draft lottery since they took a guy named Tim Duncan Ooh. all the way back in 1997. So Spurs. As you mentioned, David, and look at David right David there, Robinson David Robinson, 5-0, right? 5-0. As, <laughs> As Avery Johnson would say, 5-0. <laughs>
Bravo. <laughs> I've always liked when you do your, your Avery voice there. Um, unfortunately, look, the Spurs had a 20% chance to move up to the top three or four, but as was forecasted, they end up with the number nine selection. We're talking a little bit about some guys that may suit up in yes. silver or black. It, it's going to be interesting. I'll say, so they have three mm -hmm. first round draft picks. Now, what do you think the odds are? of them having all three of those picks come draft night, June 23rd. Less than what they had to move up in this <laughs> in this draft. <laughs> there, uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine them keeping all three of them. No. Because, no. I mean, what are they going to, the Spurs don't, what are they going to do with them? They're going to draft some obscure player out of some European league mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just leave him over there and have, you know, have his rights yeah. for five years but never bring him. So why waste that mm -hmm. pick on that? Yeah. Why not why not bundle a couple of these picks with right. maybe a player or two and get you something that you really need, plus use the number mm -hmm. nine pick to get another kit? I mean, so, that yeah, we've looked at a, a couple of uh, mock drafts yeah. already, and so far, both of these ones that I looked at had a kid out of Memphis, Jalen Duren. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a center. A big guy. They say he's very athletic. He doesn't shoot the three very well. Doesn't shoot free throws very well. So he fits right into the Spurs. Oh, and wow. then he, um, but he, <laughs> Spurs, he, uh, he's, uh, uh, he likes to slam, and he's a, he's very athletic, and he guards yeah. the rim. Yes. And yeah. that's what they need is somebody who can guard the yeah. rim. Yeah, we need so, a big guy. We, yeah. we do need a big so. guy. Uh, Spurs need a lot of different things. But as you mentioned earlier, I, I think um, it, I don't know what good it would do them to get another 6'6 six, six guard yeah. forward type of player. Yeah. Yeah, um, obviously, else. Brian Wright, Pop and RC are going to have to figure this all out. And I would like to see them trade these picks, though, and hopefully maybe bring in a veteran guy. DeAndre Ayton is apparently very upset in Phoenix. Yeah, it's a guy that uh, Spurs may look to go get. And if you can get a veteran big guy, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, trade the ninth pick. Yeah. I mean, it, they, you've yeah. got you've you've got choices, mm -hmm. and you've got picks on down the line too we that do. you can trade. Yes. This is not you don't have three picks this year. I mean, you have the three picks this right. year, but you also have multiple picks on down the line. Right. So you've got you've got a lot of options to to build that team, and. Between you and me, there's no excuse for them not to be in the playoffs next year. Not oh, with, wow. not You're with, throwing down the gauntlet. I'm throwing down the gauntlet now, now on, before they even <laughs> wow. draft. Well, think about it. Had the bro three, show gauntlet has been thrown had down. three lottery draft picks mm -hmm. in the last. This is their third lottery draft yeah. pick in three years. Yeah. They've missed the playoffs three years. I agree. Years. I agree. That's very, that's, that's very unspur-like. Yeah. And you know, there's they they were in the play-in game, which you know, just, just, <laughs> I know you love that. But I still um, I still say that this is this is this better be a playoff yeah. team this year. Well, yeah, exactly. And speaking so. of next year, David, uh, Spurs. This has actually finally been approved by mm -hmm. the county to play uh, four game four road home games. I guess hey, four, four games away from the AT and T Center. That four home away games. Yes, home huh? away games. What? <laughs> Um, okay, so we kind of knew that this was going to happen. The commissioner said that they actually they wanted to do the one-year pilot program, not the two years that the Spurs wanted. Now it's a done deal, David. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, Peter J. Holt came out and you know pretty much emphasized more than once in a letter to the entire community yeah. that the Spurs were not leaving San Antonio mm -hmm. because there was the you know the the backlash like oh they're playing in Austin to test the Austin market to see if they want to move to Austin and I think yeah. that caught I don't know if it caught him by surprise it might have but he, at least he came out like with a letter yeah. and then at commissioner's court yesterday mm -hmm. he had a video saying we're mm -hmm. not going anywhere we're staying right yeah. here we just want to try to you know spread our fan base around and why not get some people from I mean I have no problem sure. people from Austin yeah. coming down here and cheering for the Spurs they got the Austin Spurs but you know they want to come down here and cheer that's great the Alamo Dome one remember that one they wanted to go back into the Alamo Dome for their 50 anniversary because they want to obviously yeah. they want to celebrate with a whole a lot more nostalgic. people than what the what the AT&T Center Plus, is and, I, you know they won their first championship in the Alabama. right right and well I don't I don't really still like this idea of them playing these uh, away home games I think it'll be interesting to see what the schedule is because for mm -hmm. years now I think they've really been at a disadvantage with the rodeo road trip no longer have Tim, Manu, Tony. It was always a big bonding right. trip for them. But these guys, uh, the Spurs are always ending up like two and seven on these road trips. Yep. It's really kind of a, a disadvantage for them. So maybe during the rodeo road trip, they have the, the game at the Dome. And maybe one of those games in Austin kind of keeps the guys in the area here. So. Well, you know, that was what they always called it was bunker mentality. Mm -hmm. the, the, road, the rodeo road trip was that bunker <laughs> mentality. And they seem to have lost that bunker mentality. We need that bunker mentality. That's why you need that. That mean, tough veteran yeah. guy to come in and bring some, bring some of that back to them. But, but it's going to be interesting, as you said, to, to watch them play two home games in Austin. Yeah. 
That'll be Let's interesting. See, what, see yeah. what the see reactions what the schedule looks up like. there. Uh, well, David, okay, you're talking okay. earlier about that CGI cow. Uh huh. <laughs> this is now, we're switching over to the goats because Brackenridge yeah. Park is uh, definitely going to the goats as the park conservancy and the San Antonio <laughs> Parks and Rec. Excuse me. Here, are you, can I feed you? <laughs> Hired you 150 there. goats to assist with the clearing out of overgrown vegetation throughout seven acres of that park. Wow. The goats are going to clear unwanted plant species, remove brush without the need for commercial mowing or herbicides. Mm -hmm. They'll also be able to reach places where heavy machinery can't go. <laughs> the goats are going to be contained to their designated work areas. Okay, well, yeah, okay like you're going to tell these goats. Okay, Freddy the goat, here's your designated workspace right here, buddy. Just right yeah. here. This is all you get. After that, I don't know what we're going to do, but this is your designated workspace. Uh, yeah, well, they're going to be managed by a goat wrangler. How do you sign up for that? Is that a yeah. position available at the Parks and Rec? <laughs> a goat wrangler. That's a good, <laughs> good uh, like title to have there. And if anyone is interested in actually checking out these guys at work, uh, the public will be able to see them through the end of May, but cannot touch or feed them. Uh, do not touch them. Not do not disturb feed them. the goats at work. Well, I'm going to tell you this. If we don't get some rain soon, the goats are going to be out of work because <laughs> there's not going to be a whole lot of grass to be munching Vegetation on. Vegetation. Yeah. 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 Oh my goodness, so, we need mm -hmm. rain, yeah, don't we? we? Do. And, and there is some hope for rain in, in the future. So mm -hmm. we've got that at least to look forward to. Before you get started, we yeah. were talking about ERCOT and how they said right. they're, they're going to be in pretty good shape this summer. We've already had how many hundred degree days in May? Three. Three already? We've already had three yeah. 100 yeah. degree so, days. And, you know, since Saturday, guys, we've been tying or breaking records. Ooh. So I know. So that's how I wanted to start the forecast just to show you since Saturday, May 14th, we have had days where we've either Either tied or broken the high record. Saturday we tied it, we broke it on Sunday, we tied it on Monday, and yesterday we had our third triple digit day already for 2022 in May. Today's forecast calls for another record breaking day. The record for the day today is 98 degrees. We're forecasting 99 for the high. There will be areas that touch the triple digits again. So outside right now we've got some clouds out there, but they're starting to move on off to the east and temperatures are already on the rise. It's 80 already at the airport, 84 in Castroville, 85 in Hondo, 82 in Bandera. Here's a look at the forecast highs for the day today. 99 in San Antonio, but it'll be 100 at Stinson, 95 in Holotus, 98 in New Brom, and Seguin, 100 in Hondo, 101 in Uvalde, 97 in Canyon Lake. We're likely going to have our fifth day in a row of record tying or breaking temperatures. Whew, it's hot. Yeah, we were talking about ERCOT earlier. They've got their work cut out for them. Today's 12-hour uh, forecast calls for temperatures to be in the 90s in the afternoon. We'll have breezy wind conditions south at about 15 miles per hour. Uh, 99 for the high temperature this afternoon right at around 5 p.m. As you're doing the evening commute, it's going to be very, very hot outside. And then this evening, temperatures are going to stay in the 80s, so it's going to be a warm one for this evening, too. So not even much heat relief in the evening. It will be breezy at times though with gusts up to about 20 25 miles per hour. So let's talk about a change in our weather pattern. We've been stuck in a rut with these uh, record challenging high temperatures off to our west. There is a trough of low pressure which is going to shake things up for us. The first thing it's going to do is provide an opportunity for a few showers and thunderstorms late Friday all across parts of Texas. But particularly here in San Antonio, we've got about a 30% chance for isolated to scattered showers and storms. So not everybody is going to get rain, but at least this is going to shake things up a bit for us. It's going to stay hot Friday through Saturday, but up to the north there will be a cool front developing on Saturday afternoon, and that's going to sweep through San Antonio at some point on Sunday, meaning our highs will only be in the 80s Sunday Monday and Tuesday of next week. So that's going to be a pretty significant change from flirting with the triple digits. We'll be sitting fairly comfortably in the 80s and and this is an important part. We see rain chances continuing into next week. The forecast pattern next week is a little messy, but we like messy because that means that we could have the potential for some rain throughout the week next week, especially uh, Monday and Tuesday. So guys, some some optimism in the forecast. <laughs> it's been yeah. a long, long stretch of very hot weather for May. Some good old 
old-fashioned, messy rain. We need That'd it. Fun. We'll take any type of That'd rain, messy, uh, anything that we could get uh, our hands on here. I think a lot of people are just going to go out and stand outside for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like, I'm just going to stand here. Enjoy enjoy not that. 100. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> enjoy that 87-degree uh, yeah. <laughs> day, that'll hopefully. Nice. Yeah, yeah so. that'll be nice. It has been hot. I mean, you step outside Ooh. and uh, you sweating. feel it right away. Yeah, start sweating right away. Just yeah. bring some extra clothing, go out to shoot a store here in a little bit. <laughs> David, wanted to mention real quick, okay. um, uh, we're also on YouTube Live. I don't know, we're on YouTube been, Live? We're on YouTube Live, really? man. Yes, so wanted to say thank you to all the people watching all us right. right now on YouTube Live. And uh, there's a place where you can also comment. Look, check us out. I'm showing David right now. We're on YouTube Live. You could comment there if you want. Feel free to. <laughs> how, how far? <laughs> A little delay there. That's really cool. So, uh, so you can you, you can comment on YouTube Live. Yes. You can comment, comment on our there it is. You yeah. can comment on our um, Facebook page. Well, yeah, you could uh, yeah, you and any of our stories. On our Twitter, and stuff. You can comment yeah. on our Instagram. Yeah. We got everything. Yeah. We, we got, got everything. We got, yeah, we, we got you guys covered. Uh, social also, of course, media savvy. <laughs> KSAT Plus and KSAT.com. So um, yeah, feel free to uh, let us know some of your thoughts as we uh, get the bro show here, man. All right, man. Yeah. So are we doing this tomorrow? Or are we doing this later on this week? I'm not sure yet. Not no, sure. Yet. We'll check in with Alicia. We know Alicia had a very long day down she at the border. She was down yesterday. on the border yesterday. Yeah. Day yeah. before. She was, yeah. Right. So, uh, so yeah, we'll yeah. see what uh, what she has to say about tomorrow. She may tomorrow. need some rest, and then you know, <laughs> yeah, we'll bro show it for her. You know, no problem. <laughs> Can do that. Can do that. Um, all right, David. Well, thank you very much for being with us, no guys, and everyone out there on all of our platforms. We really appreciate you guys spending part of your Wednesday with us. See you on KSAT 12 News at noon. There we go. Have a good one, everybody.